Native speakers think they know how they say this word. And what about these? Two, two, two. 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 Okay. They say this word sounds like this word and this word. They're wrong. 99% of the time, Americans do not say two for this word. I'm gonna show you how native speakers actually say this word. There are a couple of different ways. And learning and using this reduction is gonna help my non-native students learning English sounds more natural speaking English. It's also gonna help you simplify so you can match the pace of fast native English. This is one of those things where native speakers swear they pronounce a word a certain way, but they totally don't. Yes, I'm looking at you, native speaker of American English. So, how is this word actually pronounced in spoken English? I asked my friends, John and Amanda, who said this word was pronounced to, to make up a sentence with the word in it. We're going to the playground. I'm going to the playground too. <laughs> yes, look at that. I love this so much. Native speakers out there are probably going what? What's the problem? Neither of them pronounced this word to. Amanda said to, to. We're going to the playground. To. Let's hear it in slow motion. We're going to the playground. To. Not. To. If it was pronounced to, the way they said it was pronounced, the sentence would be, we're going to the playground. Now, you might think, who cares? This is a minor difference. We're going to the playground versus we're going to the playground. But actually, English has a lot of words like this, words whose pronunciation will change in a sentence. They're called reductions, and spoken English is full of them. If it was just one word every once in a while, it probably wouldn't matter. But most sentences in spoken English have a reduction, if not more than one. So never pronouncing reductions really does affect the overall sound of speech. It sounds more robotic, less natural, more choppy. Even though students are taught, this word is pronounced too. Also, when you understand reductions as a non-native English speaker, it can help with listening comprehension. When my students start using reductions regularly, it does transform how they sound speaking English. If you wanna know more about the ooh vowel like in two and the schwa like in this reduction, download my free Sounds of American English cheat sheet here or in the video description. It's a quick reference guide that helps you quickly see the right tongue position. Okay, so today we're going to go over the different examples of two, how it's actually pronounced in a sentence, and I'm gonna show you all sorts of native speakers using these reductions in conversational English, interviews, major presentations. The two reduction is correct in all spoken English, from major business meetings to chatting with a friend. Also, how are these two words pronounced in conversation? We'll cover all of this. Let's get back to John's sentence. I'm going to the playground too. I love this because he used this too and this too in the same sentence. But now let's listen in slow motion. They're not pronounced the same. They're not too and too. I'm going to the playground too. Going to the. So Amanda said to in her sentence. Now John is saying ra. Going ra, 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 ra. Going da. Going da da. Going da da. Going da da. Listen again. Going to the playground to. T and d are the two reductions we use for to. But depending on how this word links into the word before, it might even sound like there's no consonant. I'll talk more about that in a second. How did John pronounce this word too? I'm going to the playground too. Too. So these two words, T-O-O -O and T-W-O, don't change in a sentence. They're still going to be too. But this word T-O will almost always change in a sentence. But most English learners are taught these are all two. The thing is, we're almost never pronouncing a word by itself. We're almost always speaking in sentences. So to think this word is 
to is not really useful even though that is its full pronunciation. In a sentence, we reduce it. Here are four examples, not me, but other native speakers not thinking at all about pronunciation. They're all going to use t. Keep in mind it's not t, but t. Very short. We didn't tell you everything that you might have needed to make a decision. Needed to. Needed to make. Next sentence. It took me years to figure out what actually happened. Years to. Years to. Next sentence. I got into it because I wanted to help people feel better. To help. To. Because I wanted to help. Last example. It's how I train my mind to be unconventional and to be creative. Two examples there. Mind to be. To. And to be creative. To. To. It's how I train my mind to be unconventional and to be creative. Definitely, some people are going to comment here, you are teaching lazy English. This is wrong. I beg to differ. This is spoken English. Most people just don't notice that they do it, that they use reductions. I'm going to ask my parents now. My dad is a retired professor in the College of Business at the University of Florida, and my mom a retired librarian and curator of a special collection at the University of Florida. Both smart, educated people, native speakers of English. My first question, Dad, is for you. How do you pronounce these words? Two, two, and two. Do you do the same, Mom? Yes. Isn't that funny? The pronunciation we teach isn't the one we actually use on a regular basis. In their sentences, they both use the d pronunciation. I'm going to the store to buy groceries. We're going to Gainesville today. Going to. Going to. Now, let's see some other examples of other native speakers naturally using the d pronunciation. You might use the d pronunciation if the word before ends in a vowel or diphthong or a voiced consonant like M. Will you come to the party? Come to, come to, come to the party. I've noted the continued importance of paying attention to children. Attention to, to. Attention to children. Next sentence. We've cut veterans unemployment by more than half, down to 4.2%. Down to, to. Down to 4.2%. Next example. How'd you get them all to come together and, and play nice, so to speak? Soda. So to speak. Duh. So to speak. If you feel any stress about there being two different reductions of two, just stick with t. Make it fast, link it into the words around it, it will always sound great. Now, if the word before ends in t, you'll just want to make one t sound, not two. For example, I thought to myself. Thought ends in T. Two or T begins with a T. We link with a single T. So it can feel like we're dropping the T in two and just linking the schwa to the end of the word thought. I thought to. Thought to. This also happens with words that end in a D because one of the pronunciations is D with a D sound. You can link the two words together so it sounds like you're actually just adding a schwa to the end of the word before. A really common example is with the verb need. You don't need to do that. Need. One D sound linking the two words. Need. You don't need to do that. Now we can't talk about the two reduction without talking about gonna, wanna, gotta. Three phrases with a two reduction built in. Going to becomes gonna. Want to becomes wanna. Got to becomes gotta. You should never write these reductions in formal writing, but it is okay to use them in spoken English even in more formal contexts. I'm going to give you a few quick examples of each in a more formal setting, like an interview or giving a talk or presentation. These people are not just chatting with friends, and even in these more formal settings, these reductions are used. First, gonna. You're going to spend $800. The first thing I'm going to do is look up who I'm buying from. It's going to be much easier for people to engage with. Gonna. Natural spoken English. Now, gotta. And I've got to say, I'm still at it 40 years later. We got to get out of the crisis mentality. 
You gotta make sure there's a strategy you can turn to. Gotta, that's a flap T. Gotta, da, 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 da. the tongue just bounces once against the roof of the mouth. Gotta. Now, wanna. In both wanna and gonna, the T totally disappears, doesn't it? Some of us don't want to think back to our childhoods. So I want to share with you some things that I found. Okay, now for all my non-native speakers of American English out there who are working on their accents and interested in playing with this two reduction, let's give you a small training session. You know, you learn a concept like this and you get it and you might start to hear it, but to change your habit, to reduce two naturally in a sentence without having to think about it, that takes time. Changing a physical habit doesn't happen overnight. And actually training to change a pronunciation habit is a huge part of my online school, Rachel's English Academy, where we have all the materials you need to train, as well as teachers to give you feedback on your training. If you're interested, please do check out rachelsenglishacademy.com. Now, let's get to it. You're gonna hear a sentence, then we're gonna break it down. Notice if it's a true T or not. Notice how fast it is. We'll try in the audio to isolate just the reduction of the word two. You'll hear it five times in a row, repeat each time. Just focus on what you hear and matching that exactly, not what you think the word should sound like. Then we're gonna build that reduction back into the sentence so you'll hear just the reduction and either the word before or after and so on. Each time you'll listen and repeat five times. This is training after all. You're gonna have to simplify your mouth movements to do this. You're gonna have to give up trying so hard, give up thinking so much about the mouth positions and the sounds and just let your body take over. Just let it be pure sound imitation the way a baby would learn. Here we go. I forgot to lock up. To. 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 Forgot to. Forgot to. Forgot to. Forgot to. Forgot to. It'll be good to see you. Duh. 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 Good da. Good da. Good da. Good da. Good da. I'm about to leave. Ta. Da. Ta. 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 About to. About to. About to. About to. About to. It's a long way to go. Da. 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 Wait a. Wait a. Wait a. Wait a. Wait a. You're about to find out. Ta. 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 About to. About to. About to. About to. About to. I love exploring language like this and helping my students reach their full potential through English speaking confidence. If you love what you saw here, join my academy, give it a try. We do have a 30 day money back guarantee. Be sure to subscribe here on YouTube with notifications on, that's free, and it'll keep you in the loop of all of our lessons here. Keep your learning going now with this video. I love being your English teacher. That's it, and thanks so much for using Rachel's English.